you, you touched on supplements a little bit. How yeah. important are they? I mean, is, is it to the point where almost everybody needs some sort of supplement regime? You know, I, I, um, in, in 35 years of, of working with people, I, I think that if we're, if we're going to optimize the adrenals and optimize uh, hormone function, we're going to give people the, the, the fiber and the nutrients that I, I think that supplements play a big role in, in optimum health and nutrition. I mean, I can take two people, put one on a superfoods diet and exercise program and a good power of the mind program, you know, eyes open, hypnosis scripts. And I take the other person with the same protocol, but then add certain supplements specific to their potential deficiencies that we've identified mm -hmm. based on questionnaires and lab tests and so forth. And I, I can tell you, w without a doubt, the individual taking the supplements with the rest of the regime is going to notice considerably better results and performance. I mean, you can't deny bi biochemistry, cellular health, nutrition. I mean, we see it under the microscope. We see it in the laboratories. We see it in the hormone levels, and um, I'll give you a good example. I remember the first time I had my hormones for testosterone checked, and I had a high level of what's called sex hormone binding globulin. That's the transport of the hormones, but it binds the testosterone and doesn't release it into the system where it needs to go. And uh, I, I noticed that uh, my testosterone level came back as that of a 70-year-old, and I was only like 38, and I couldn't believe it. I said, I work out, I eat good, I'm in a good mindset. I mean, why, why is there a decline in interest in sex? Why is my libido dropping, my erectile function declining? So um, I went about uh, designing a study with a group that had a group of herbs, and they professed that a Venus sativa, milky green oats, uh, epimedium sagittin, which is horny goat weed, and uh, nettles, and there was about five other herbs. And at that time, we put them together in some capsules, and we gave a group of men and women these capsules. And I was one of the persons in the study. I designed it, but I wanted to be part of the study, too, because I was deficient. My hormones levels measured I was deficient. And within um, uh, uh, three, uh, two weeks, it was 14 days, we rechecked everyone's levels, the testosterone level had optimized, improved dramatically. I mean, my level went from that of a 7-year-old to that of a 20-year-old, and, you know, I was 38, and I was encouraged. I noticed the libido came back, sexual interest improved. The women said the same thing. They noticed uh, uh, better libido, better orgasmic intensity. The men noticed better erectile function. And I said, wow, all of that in, in just two weeks? And, and sure enough, but we were able to document it before and after with hormone levels tested before and after. And the only difference was we changed their supplementation. We didn't change their diet, didn't change you know, their exercise program, didn't ask them to do any mind power of the mind, anything. It was just, just supplements. So uh, I see this time and again. Uh, new red blood cells form every 120 days. So when we supplement, we see oval-shaped cells or microcytic cells, which are signs of anemia. When we give them B12 folic acid, methylcobalamin, cyanocobalamin, different forms of highly absorbable B12. We give them folic acid, we give them iron, we give them the building blocks that allows the cellular wall to form perfectly. See, the cell walls are are like the brain of the body. You see, we know this because when they take the chromosome, uh, the nucleus, out of the center of, of the cells, that's kind of what we used to think was the genetic brain uh, of mm -hmm. the cell. And, and shockingly, these cells survived after we removed the nucleus and uh, in studies, then, they were given nutrients, and the nutrients, so long as they could get through the phospholipid uh, membrane, the fatty membrane, it would determine what nutrients got inside the cell. And these cells would live for three mo more months or so, so long as they were surrounded in the right environment with the right fatty acids, uh, the right uh, amino acids, the right uh, complex carbohydrate sugars, uh, the right vitamins and minerals, these cells survived and functioned. And uh, the cells adapted. They continue to function as muscle cells, continue to function as neurological cells. They function without the nucleus, without the chromosome genetic information. So the brain is not the genetics. It's not predetermined by our genetics. The, the, the health of your cells is determined by the environment that you put your cells in. So the, the good thing is, even if you've been dealt a poor card of, ha uh, card of, of deck of uh, poor genetics, and you have these genetic tendencies to manifest eventually baldness or obesity or diabetes or, 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 or cancer. The reality is if you surround your cells and bathe them with whole superfood nutrients and you give them the right vitamins and minerals and nutrients and you give them love in the body and you, you give them everything exercise and whole body vibration and everything that stimulates the lymphatics. And that I haven't even talked about. The lymphatics are more extensive than the red blood cell system. It, it removes toxins and it brings nutrients and it's just so important. To, to detoxify with the lymphatics. That's why I do a lot of trampling work and a lot of bouncing. Mm -hmm. But all that together, you, you put that cell in the right environment and it's as healthy and it's going to live forever. 